And here now for more on the verdict and what happens next are Dan Abrams, ABC's chief legal affairs anchor, our senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas, the editorial page editor of the Wall Street Journal, Paul Jugo, and Tavis Smiley of PBS. Let me start with you, Dan. No surprise to you who said this all the way. Uh, the prosecution didn't make the case. Uh, that's right, because when you look at what the legal question here was, the question was, was there reasonable doubt about the moment that George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin. And the question there was, did George Zimmerman reasonably believe that great bodily injury was going to be inflicted on him? And there was a lot of evidence in this case that Trayvon Martin had beaten George Zimmerman. Now, what led up to that is a separate question. But the legal question is only what was going on in George Zimmerman's mind at the moment he did that, and was there reasonable doubt as to what he believed? When you, when you picture it that way, and you're talking about just that moment he shoots, and the amount of evidence there was that George Zimmerman had been beaten by Trayvon Martin, it was difficult to see how the prosecution was going to win this case. So, Pierre, that does get to the question of did they overreach? Well, the Justice Department is looking at that very issue uh, in terms of whether a civil rights case can be brought. In terms of the prosecutors, a lot of uh, legal scholars are going to look at this case and say maybe they should have gone for a lesser charge. But, you know, as you look at this case, you have what took place in the court, which had to deal with the law. But the court of public opinion is where this thing is exploded. Uh, you have many in the African-American community wondering about one single issue. Why was Trayvon Martin singled out when at the time of day between 7 and 8 at night, we're not talking about midnight, we're talking, not talking about 10 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning, we're talking about a reasonable period to be walking down the street, no report of a crime. That is the issue that many African Americans are And that's the broad question, about. but given this, this Justice Department investigation, the prospect of a Justice Department investigation, clearly it's open right now, but the bar is very high after an acquittal. They're going to have to show that the violence was motivated by racial prejudice, not an accident, not negligence, not self-defense. The bar is extremely high, but the Justice Department will be under intense pressure by the civil rights community to do something. Can they resist it? Uh, I would hope they will. Uh, I think it would be seen by a lot of the country as a case of double jeopardy. Uh, uh, this is not, it's not as if this did not get an extensive trial. I mean, the state threw everything they had at, uh, at, at George Zimmerman for a year and a half. The judge, in many of the rulings, was tended to be more sympathetic. Uh, uh, they reduced, they gave the option of the manslaughter charge. They still couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. I, I think that you cannot say that Trayvon Martin did not have representation in this case. Agree with that? Um, I disagree. I think this is, for many Americans, George, just another piece of evidence of the incontrovertible contempt that this nation often shows and displays for black men. Uh, in just a matter of weeks in this nation, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and that wonderful, brilliant speech by Dr. King, I Have a Dream. In that speech, you'll recall the one line that we all seem to know, not much else, but we know that one line. I want my children to one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. George Zimmerman knew nothing of Trayvon Martin's character. All he saw was his color. Something is wrong in this nation. 50 years after the March on Washington, while the Voting Rights Act is being gutted, speaking of the Justice Department, what they'll do about that, perhaps, something is wrong when adults can racially profile children. Trayvon Martin was a child racially profiled and gunned but down. That wasn't the the I mean, I think that is a big debate we're going to have, but it that is. wasn't the question in the courtroom, was it? Well, I think what happens is if you go to any barbershop, any beauty salon, even prior to the trial, Dan, and I don't have the scientific data to prove this, but I'm a black man, I live and work in a black community, I don't know that you could have gotten the majority of African Americans who believe that this case was going to end differently anyway. They were hoping against hope that something different might come out, George. And, 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 and as a legal matter, yeah. could it have ended differently? Is there a different kind of case the prosecutors could have No. Brought? I mean, look, are there mistakes that the prosecutors made, in my opinion? Yeah. Should they have introduced all of George Zimmerman's statements to show sort of minor inconsistencies as opposed to effectively forcing him to testify? Yeah, that was a little mistake. But the reality is, it wouldn't have made a difference if he'd been charged with manslaughter versus murder. Everyone's talking about, well, maybe they overcharged here. Yeah, they probably did. Would it have made a difference? No. With regard to the federal investigation, yes, there will be a federal investigation. They will publicly discuss it. And there will not be charges filed I, under uh, the Civil Rights Division will not file. Because they can't win? They, because they can't win in this case. They won't win, and they know that. 
Now, there are two separate questions here that we're discussing, and I think it's important to distinguish them. One is a sort of broad societal right and wrong. And what is wrong with our society? And that is a fair question to ask. But that is a different question than talking about what happened in that courtroom. Because if you watch that trial every day, the way that I did, you do lose the sort of big picture and you get very focused on the little picture. But Dan, but Dan, but the, mm -hmm. Dan, respectfully, the problem is, though, that every time we get to that nexus, and I agree with you, there are two separate issues here, but every time we get to that nexus, we never seem to accept the fact that race in this country is real, that color will get you killed, and every time we have on these cases, and I believe in looking at a case-by-case -case situation, but here's the problem. In the aggregate, every time you have this issue, Somebody can always explain away why this person well, got off, why this person was not found guilty, and what we have is a bunch of dead black men. So then the question coming to that, Pierre, is then what does the Justice Department do beyond the civil rights investigation? How does the president react? We saw him step in with a very powerful statement at the beginning of this case. What now? Well, I think one of the things which will have to happen is a broader conversation about race. It is often you know, discussed, but never fully put it on the table. And even though you have an African-American president, even though you have an attorney general who told us in an interview he had been profiled himself, mm. which is going to have to deal with this issue, this problem of how black men are viewed, conversations that we had uh, interviewing uh, educated black females, two-parent households, who every day teach their children Young black males, when you go into a convenience store, put your hands, do not put your hands in your pockets. Never wear a hoodie. Be careful of what you say and how you say it. This is 2013. It's fascinating that we're still having that conversation. And I think everyone wishes, Paul, as you go, that George Zimmerman would have never gotten out of that car mm -hmm. that I, night. W w without question. It's terrible what happened. Uh, uh, but you cannot try social policy in an individual case. It's very difficult to do that, and I think it does injustice to the individuals in that courtroom. Uh, the broader conversation that Tavis talks about, yes, we should have that. I think we do have that debate. We're having a huge debate in New York City right now about stop and frisk, the policy of stopping people who are suspected, perhaps, of carrying weapons. That is going on in a court of law. Uh, there's a case against it, and it's going on in the larger uh, uh, debate. But when, so we're but, having but when children in America, when our children are forced to surrender their life choices, before they ever know their life's chances, our democracy is threatened. Any chance this will lead to a review of stand your ground laws in these states? No, because remember, this wasn't, didn't end up being a stand your ground case. They waived the stand your ground hearing. This became a classic self-defense uh, case in, in Florida. So I, I don't, I mean, look, are people gonna talk about it? Yes. Uh, are they gonna be able to point to this case and say this is the example of stand your ground? Uh, uh, no. Here you get George, answer. one interesting point. Is the system capable of answering a question about what's in someone's mind. Did the actions of Zimmer, for example, in terms of his views on race, seep into how he responded once he encountered Trayvon Martin? That may be the question that the system could not address. And I want to hear from the jurors, by the way, in this case, because we don't know, from the, uh, just based on what we've heard now, whether these jurors believe George Zimmerman or not. But well, what we do know, Dan, though, at least what it, as it appears to me, you can stand your ground unless you're a black man. Well, look, I, we don't know that. I mean, no, I, 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 it appears to me, and I think many other persons in this country, that you can, in fact, stand your ground unless you are a black man. George Zimmerman was, a label, was allowed to stand his ground. Trayvon Martin of, was not allowed to been, stand his ground. There have been a lot of cases in Florida involving black-on-black -black, mm -hmm. uh, crime where similar results have occurred, where no charges were filed. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying that I do really want to focus on, on this case. And then I think we need to also have the discussion. But I don't know that when you connect the two, that it's necessarily fair in connection with this case. But I, I am going to be very curious to hear what the jurors We're say. all waiting for that. And thank you all for your insight.